And to finish, I would like to read a few sections from this book published by your very own Rich Sue's out there in Joshua Tree. It was a book of um, basically a long poem uh, through most of the year 2019. Uh, I think we may be getting a visit from Nora the cat. Don't worry, Nora. <laughs> you want to step up? No. Come on. Might be a good idea. If you may as well see Nora now. She's here. This is Nora, and she's going. Shall I put her out? Yes, might might be better. We won't be very long. Um, I decided I had never written a long time. This is more a long sequence. Uh, much of it is looking around what goes on outside and thinking about the evil things that are going on even farther afield. So, um, section 53. An acrid smell drifts across the lower slopes early, and the rising sun shines through a smoky veil and raveling east to west. It lingers like the aftershock to violence committed far away, Spring flowers are blooming, migrant flocks are circling the earth, fire trucks race toward baseline and rural and winter's last cough greets the day. There's mallow in the canyons and malice in a bitter heart. Sometimes the planet is a spinning top and the devil's got the whip. He's read the manifesto and he's armed. And we can all guess who he's voting for. Section 62 comes from the Chiricahua Mountains um, trip that we took. Ringtails are very acrobatic animals. This is about one of the ringtails that visited. A ringtail climbs down from the stars to the edge of a roof where he finds a wooden beam extending to a hook on which a glass hangs filled with earthly sweetness. He makes of his body a question mark that asks for truths only known among animals. He's agile and can balance on a breath, right side up or upside down with a universe of sound compressed inside his ears and eyes only for night when the galaxies above him are thick enough to stir with his tail. Section 65. The woodpeckers here, we have Gila woodpeckers. I don't know if you have those in... Joshua Tree. The light climbs every rung along a woodpecker's back and ignites the red cap on his head. Tap, tap, tap on the side of the house. He's making a hole for evil spirits to escape. No more waking up in the night. No more looking out at the dark to check for the source of suffering. There he flies, bouncing on the air from Christian to Buddhist to Jew. One bird for every deity never asks. He even visits atheists and never asks whose souls are hung to dry along the washing line. You may get these emails from people you don't know, often in Africa, uh, trying to cut some kind of a deal for you to send them a few hundred thousand dollars, in which case you get a few million back. Um, this is a kind of imitation of one of those. Spellcheck couldn't deal with this section because I'm <laughs> virtually every word on purpose. So if you look up section 81, it probably won't even look the way it sounds, but it sounds like this. Dearly beloved, I am reaching for your most invaluable assistance in the matter concerning my uncle, the ambassador. God rest his most decorated soul and grant me access to his millions that currently depend on you sending me by the most financially convenient route, 10,000 of your very cherished dollars for which you shall be rewarded in the currencies of Uganda and salvation. So please reply at your earliest, but should you ignore me, all the fears you ever feared shall gather and the devil have access to your computer, all the precious files will be stars and broken glass between his teeth. Oh. <laughs> so. All right, section 106, back to the normal voice now. 
The sky's lonely emperor signals for another day to begin, and his armies raise the sun to its place on the horizon. He's had a quiet night, feeding starlight to coyotes. Now he stokes the fires that bring on summer's heat. It's very much a game to him, setting record highs for certain dates. 109, 112, 100 and brimstone. He sometimes sends a whiplash of lightning just to tease the earth and promise storms only to withhold them while he courts solitude with his only company, the lion he leads through heaven on a leash. And the last one for now, we're back in the AM hours. This is just before dawn, it's a time hey. very much. And we will end with a thought that I hope carries on into the coming weeks, months, and years. At 4 a.m. it's time to dust the moonlight from the rooftops and polish the surface of the pond. The hummingbirds jumpstart their hearts and the thrashers grip the cactus where they call wick wick above the rustle quail mate on the ground. The powerful awake refreshed and put on their boldest faces for the early news clean shaven, hair frozen into place, jaws rolling underneath every word they speak, while the gears inside the earth cry out for oil and human kindness to keep it turning. Thank you. <laughs>